Hello and welcome to another episode of the Amateur Machine Shop. In this video I will be making four various styles of tangential tool holders. Two holders will be for 5 16 high speed steel bits and two for round carbide 1 8 and 1 quarter inch diameters. Over the years I've collected a lot of carbide shanks from broken end mills and drills from mishaps. Thought it was a good time to put them to use and tangential tool holders are a perfect way to implement their use. Tangential tooling is not a new invention. Seen many posts online to describe them being available in catalogs since the late 1800s, but never seem to have caught on in the industry. From all the social media posts, I am seeing them used more and more by hobbyists and thought it was time to make my own set. Here I'm using the 516's high speed steel bit in the holder, set at a 45 degree. A small radius is ground on the tip, I am taking light cuts as that is all the small lathe can handle. In the future I'll experiment with lower speed and taking heavier cuts. Many comments I read online from tangential tool users was that the machine finish is very smooth. That would really depend on the radii ground on the tip. I found using the 1 8 carbide shank provided a very smooth finish. This is the 1 8th carbide round bit taking about a tenth thou depth of cut. RPM is 2500 and machining a piece of coal roll steel. I purposely fed the bit into the radius forming in the middle to see if the tool would chatter but machined very nicely. Using Fusion 360 I created models of each lathe tool holder. The two 516 high speed steel bit holders and the 1 8 and quarter inch diameter holders not shown in that order. Using the Fusion 360 models I created a set of drawings for each holder which will be available on the website shortly. The steel doesn't look like much, it's 5 8 by 2 half inch coal roll steel that was left outside and rusted. I start the build by cutting off two pieces both three inches long. A couple of notes. First when I created the tangential lathe tooling I thought it would make a great build video series. Ended up having four hours of content for the entire build. No one wants to watch four hours of machining and with a lot of editing the content was reduced to 60 minutes. You will see most of the machining has been sped up and I tried to keep the video snippets to about 10 seconds each. The second note, I have broken up the build into three video parts and each will be about 20 minutes. My goal for my content is to try to show all the steps needed to machine the object, providing some tips along the way for those that are interested in learning machining skills.
Now that three faces are milled square to each other, both ends can be milled square to the machine surfaces. At this point the size isn't critical, only the thickness will come into play. Using an older half inch carbide end mill, the quill is lowered to a point that will allow the cutting flutes to still mill the face. The end mill is rather worn at the tip so I make do. Now that five faces are milled square on both steel blocks, the next step is to set up for milling the thickness, which in this case will become the tool width. For milling the thickness, I am using a 3 quarter Iskar insertable end mill. I have had this tool for the last 20 plus years. We used them a lot back when I worked in a tool and die shop. Worked really well on the CNC mills, and we would feed them upwards of 40 to 60 inches per minute. The mill I am using is referred to as a mill drill. It uses R8 collets and tool holders. Each one has to be inserted by hand and tightened and loosened accordingly. Currently, the tooling I have in my garage is limited. Over the years, I never needed to purchase my own parallel set as my employer always had them available. In order to raise the steel blocks to allow for milling the thickness, I add a quarter inch keystock to the parallels to make up the difference. In order to ensure the parts are tight against the parallels, a hammer or bump lock is used to tap down the parts. Another option is to use paper feelers in each corner. My vice isn't perfect so the blocks barely get tight in the parallels. As mentioned earlier, I'm using a mill drill. To use the feed wheel for the quill, the lock bolt knob needs to be tightened. The side handle is released and now the feed wheel can be used to increment the spindle up or down. I am fortunate to have a power feed add-on for the x-axis on this mill.
The blocks are now to the correct thickness along with having square parallel faces. For the 5 16 high speed steel bit holders, the thickness is 7 16 and for the round carbide shank holders, I went with 3 8 thick. Next is to lay out the holders on the steel and use a bandsaw to cut them out. The idea is to cut off as much material as possible to reduce the time required to mill away material. First I tried using only calipers to scribe the lines, but ended up being too faint and difficult to see. Still using a wide sharpie marker as a substitute to lay out blue, as I start more machining projects I will have to look at buying some Dicom steel layout fluid. As you'll notice, it is much easier to see the scribe lines with a darkened face on the steel. For the viewers, having the camera at the right angle helps. I then proceed to chase the lines with a carbide scriber and a machinist square to ensure the lines are parallel and square to the machine surfaces. A few more scribes on the blocks and ready to start cutting on the bandsaw. The bandsaw I have has a plate mounted to use the saw vertically. This comes in handy for cutting odd parts. I squared a little WD-40 as a lube for the blade. Using a pair of locking pliers to hold the blocks and slowly feeding them into the blade. The first few seconds are actual cutting speed and then the videos are sped up. Saw cuts can take a while but save a lot of milling and it keeps from turning the steel into chips. What happens when you push the material too hard against the blade? Well, I found out quickly that if too much pressure is placed against the blade, the blade jumps off the idler wheel. Having cut the parts free from the blocks, they can now be milled to their respective sizes. Three of the holders are all the same, 7 8 width, 2 inch posts, mounting area and 3 8 thick. The other 5 16 tool I created is a 1 inch overall width.
A final measurement and that concludes part one. In part two, I will cover the drilled holes and milling the compound angles for the tool bit. Thank you for watching.